Morning, so as I said in uh, one of my last videos, I'm gonna try and do some regular videos um, about the Nissan Pulsar or you know something about the car in one way or another. Um, I've had the car now um, about a month, maybe five weeks, something like that. Um, and yeah, so my first video, which is obviously this one, the one you're watching, is gonna be you know 11 or 12 things that I found slightly annoying about the car um, in no way is this meant to mean the bad things or anything like that they're just sort of conveniences that I've had um, in other cars um, although actually a couple of them thinking about it are you know could do with improving shall we say um, so yeah we'll get straight into that then Now the first issue, and I believe this is quite common across the Nissan range, uh, the Qashqai, the Duke, and I've seen a few people mention on the Pulsar, is the auto wipers. Um, I'll be honest, they, they, they're terrible. Um, so you've got three modes on the stalk. Um, auto, full, and then monsoon, fast, whatever you want to call it. There's actually no manual intermittent mode, which is a bit... Uh, bit crap so as several have pointed out you know you have to have it in auto when it's not raining fast enough but then sometimes your windows covered and I mean covered in water you can be on the highest sensitivity setting going and it won't clear then you know 50 yards down the road it might have cleared up a bit still spitting but then it'll go in you know absolute rapid fire so it's kind of like all or nothing with the auto and in my opinion that could do with you know that, that just needs changing that is a bit of a design issue to be fair there uh, the other issue as well that i found um this is the 1.2 techna so in terms of trim level this is like the highest one this is you know all singing or dancing let's say um, there's no one touch windows for all the all the other windows apart from the driver so you have to hold i know again it's not a massive inconvenience but you know i've got a 17 year old Ibiza in my garage that has one touch windows for the two front windows there's no rear windows it's three door car um, but yeah you think in 2018 all the windows or at least the front two would be one touch so if I want to have the you know passenger window down I have to hold it which you know the more you're holding it less time you've got two hands on the wheel so yeah that's another again it's not a major it's just an annoyance Ah, the other one, um, this one I think is a bit of a design issue, and that is um, the indicator. Um, so when I go home every day, um, I have to come off the roundabout, I take a right turn off the roundabout. So I indicate to go right, but obviously to the you know, on approach to a roundabout, you turn your wheel to the left. Um, but as soon as that wheel passes halfway going, you know, steer to the left, it drops off the right indicator, even though I've not actually moved the wheel right, so it shouldn't have self-cancelled. Again, so that means that I'm indicating on approach to the roundabout, but the minute I hit the roundabout, the indicator drops off. Uh, you know, I have to do this every day, you know, five, six, seven days a week, uh, on my way home from work, or if I've been into town, and that's just on one roundabout. Um, so yeah, that gets a bit annoying as well, so, you know, yeah, sort that one out, Nissan, please, thank you. Um, this one's another just slight annoyance, it's not actually an issue, uh, no auto lock when you drive off. I thought that was standard actually, to be honest, in all cars, you know, since about 2004, I know 2004 cars that have got auto lock. So yeah, I press this button here, and that will lock all my car, all my doors. Um, but yeah, again, my last car, say Leon, uh, 2015. As soon as you got above 10 mile an hour, all the doors locked. That was a bit of a like passenger safety, I suppose, something getting from carjacked or whatever. Um, yeah, so like I said, it's not a major thing. Don't worry about it. It's just strange, right? It's not got it. Um, number five on the list is um, this stupid armrest down here. I should have paid extra, I suppose, for a fully adjustable slot, you know, slides forwards, backwards, up and down. But thankfully I'm you know six one. I sit far enough back I can actually use the armrest. Only just mind. I think if you're under six foot and you've got little legs, it's no use of ornament for anyone. It's it'll be too far back for anyone um, who's not at least six one. 
so yeah, that's a bit of a crapper. Number six, back onto wipers again, the washer jet spray pattern. <laughs> Sounds really ridiculous, I know. Um, I complain on my Leon as well. All the others have a fan miss. The Leon was like a car from the 90s that just put out jets of water, um, which were, I don't think anyone like that. Most people you know, changed it with uh, some fan adapters. This one, it seems to squirt plenty of water to start with then just fucking dribbles. And I thought when I got it, the dealers had not filled up the washer tank enough. I thought, you know, I didn't have to put anything, maybe 50, 100 mil. Um, and I'd filled it so there was plenty of water in it. It just doesn't seem to like giving much water up, really. It gives a blast start to start with and then it just dribbles all along the front. Um, so yeah, it's a bit of a strange one. Uh, number seven, funnily enough, this is one I used to take the mick out of on my lay on. Um, but after two years of driving that, I kind of got used to it, and that is the gear indicator. So in the centre dash, um, in the I think it was the top right corner, we've got a temperature set, temperature read in here. Um, the Leon told you what gear you was in. Oh, shut up. Um, so yeah, the Leon told you what gear you was in, and I always took the out of that. I didn't really need it, and even though I'd look at what gear was in, I'd still put my hand on the gear stick just to feel what gear I was in, as though I didn't trust the readout. Um, I'll be honest, for the first two weeks, it took some getting used to that I don't have a gear indicator. Although it tells me to change gear, um, you know, up or down, there's a pheasant in the road, come on pheasant. <laughs> um, so although it tells me to change gear, it doesn't tell me what my current gear is. Um, I've got used to it. Again, I just found that a bit weird. I thought, you, you know, it's got the technology to tell you to move up or down and into what gear. So it's not just like move up, move down, or say go up into fifth or go down to third or whatever. Um, so I don't know why it doesn't tell you what your current gear selection is. But again, that's just me being a picky, to be fair. Another ridiculous one, again, this is just me being absolutely picky. I think this is number eight now, I'm not sure. There's no ambient lighting in the foot well. Again, I took the in the lay on. I just thought, who needs to see the feet? It, I kind of got used to it, it was quite nice. Um, and I'll be honest, I've got used to it in this, so I don't know. Maybe we'll cross that one off the list. So that might just knock this down to a 10 list video instead of 12. Um, number nine, and this is coming from someone who's always had car with um, dials for temperature and lower settings than that, is the responsiveness of the hot and cold, you know, up and down buttons. Um, if you hold them, it takes like half a second just to go down half a degree. So if you want to go from like 26 to 20, you're probably holding that button for like five, 10 seconds. Yeah, you can quickly tap it, but I don't know. That's just me getting used to something before you just whip a dial around. You know, with other cars, you just flip a, a dial, a knob, whatever you want to call it. You flip that round, jobs are good, and you've got cooler temperature, hotter temperature. You know, still told me what the exact temperature were, but it was just on a dial. Um, so, yeah, maybe that's me, um, but I think that those buttons could be a bit more responsive, to be fair. Ah, number 10, uh, this is probably a bit more my. Uh, the stop start on stop start on this um, again. People love or hate it. When I got the Leon, I thought I'm not going to like it, but I did. I, you know, it never bothered me. The Leon was very, very responsive. Um, I never. I, I don't get why people complain about stop start. I'll be honest with you. Obviously, if you're a track, you just turn it off. But everyday driving, there's nothing wrong with it, in my opinion. Um, and the Leon worked very well. Um, it had even if I put it into neutral and just coast it to lies, you know, once you got to about two mile an hour, it probably cut your engine out. This, driving it every day for four or five weeks now, I bet, I bet it's not even used stop start like 10 times yet. Just before this video, I've just been and dropped Jen off. Um, five, six mile drive into town, five mile I think. You think, oh well it's had a chance, it's warmed up and it's done everything, stop. And it didn't, it didn't shut off what, it just kept running. You know, for like 30 seconds or a minute whilst you know she was getting out of the car. I think it, you know, it could be a bit more responsive in the, in the sense of it stopping. Um, when it does work, which has only been a few times, 
it does come back in, you know, the lightest touch on the clutch brings it back to life. So I've got absolutely no problem, it just doesn't seem to want to switch off uh, urgent enough really. Unfortunately enough, it's kind of like it either does switch off or it doesn't. It's never actually caught me out of some lights and I've got pissed off with it. I just wish it actually switched off. So yeah, we're getting towards the end of the list now. Number 11 is another wiper issue. Amazingly, I just can't believe how many actually. I it's probably the time of the year. It's had a lot of rain, so I've noticed the wipers a lot. But it's, again, comparing to the Leon, is if I've got my wipers on, whether it was intermittent, fall, monsoon, weather, whatever, as soon as I select reverse, it'll whack on my rear wipers to obviously clear the rear window. Um, great, this car's got cameras, so you might not need to learn that, but I'm still a bit old school. I'm not relying on the cameras. I'll, I'll still look over my shoulder when I'm reversing away, uh, reverse onto my drive. So, this one, yep, you get home, you want to reverse on your drive, you've got your front wipers on, the rear doesn't kick in. So you want to clear it again. Yeah, it's, you know, first world problem is you've got to move a switch, oh dear. But it's just, again, one of them, why not, you know, you've built in the technology's all there, obviously proven because the VAG range has it. Um, and this one's, you know, probably got more technology than the VAG do, you know, it's got auto wipers, which I didn't have, so I can't, you know, in some ways I shouldn't be complaining on this video. And I, like I said, I don't want to think of it as a complaint, just more of a, for annoyances that I think could have been improved, you know, make or break a deal on a car. Something that people might find interesting and worth knowing. But yeah, um, again, why does the rear wiper not come on when you start reverse gear and you've got your front wipers on? Hey ho. So yeah, the last one, um, this is quite an annoying one. I've got used to it, um, but yeah, again, everything's up on the um, on the dash. But when you change the volume, um, the radio or the music, you have to look at the center console. Again, it's just, I got used to it again. Everything, everything I wanted to look at on the Leon was down in the middle. Everything came up on the center display between the two clocks, um, but for, God knows what reason. Yeah, I can get the track up on here. I can see what I'm listening to. Well, I can hear what I'm listening to, so I don't need to bloody read it. Um, but when I change the volume, I have to, you know, if I want to set it to a certain level, which I do, you know, I think people will be lying if they don't like to have on certain numbers. You have to look at the center console. So that just means, again, glancing away from where you should be looking. Um, but, hey ho, again, yeah, first of problems. So yes, that's my list of uh, little niggly, annoying things. Like I said, they're not major issues and people are probably watching this video thinking, what a wanker. <laughs> yeah, I should be grateful I've got a new car. I'm not saying I'm not grateful, I do, you know. I am, but you know, it's nice having a new car. Um, they've just been asking some of these issues right out a little bit, that's all I'm saying. Um, don't worry, it's not all negative. I will be doing another video on things that I really like about the car, so yeah make sure you watch that one um, so yeah if you've enjoyed this video um, I will be doing more about the car hopefully I'm going to try and do them every week um, but certainly I'm going to try and make a regular thing of it so yeah if you do like it just give this video a like if you didn't then just give it a dislike whatever um, and yeah make sure you subscribe as well um, hopefully every Sunday I, if I do I'm going to try and make them on Sundays so yeah make sure you subscribe to it and um, also click that bell icon and you will get a notification when the video is up so yeah that's it for now um, happy driving <laughs> god these are some roads